Okay, so in this tutorial, we'll take a look at just some ways that you can further customize your dials as well as build your own dials. Really, you can build a custom dial out of anything, a picture, a shape, caption. You can even use characters. So let's go ahead and I'm just gonna put a, a, a ready-made dial on the slide just so we can look at some more ways that we uh, can work with the dials and uh, the different orientations that are available. In the previous tutorial, we worked with the default orientation of this half circle, right? When we inserted it, it's 180 degrees. We customized um, the number of steps, but essentially we kept that default setting. And let me just put one more in here. So now we have two. Well, we don't have to work just with that horizontal sort of left to right, right to left type dial. We can rotate it. And now we have more of a vertical, right? So this would be top down and this would be side to side. So if we preview the slide real quick, and we're still working with the half circle approach, right? So in this case, you could put all your content off over here, while this one is really pointing more to content that's above the dial. Well, one thing that we would do for a lot of uh, dials is actually want this rotation, you see the rotation up here, to be a full circle. It goes all the way around, not just in a uh, 180 degrees. So in that case, you can do a couple things. We could change the rotation to 360. And that's going to create a full circle. Another option would just be to drag this end flag all the way over and choose where you want it to stop. And if I don't go quite all the way, there's where the, uh, the value makes it a lot easier. So now it's a 360, it's a full circle. If we wanted the, let's just preview it real quick to see it. So if I spin this, you'll see that I can only make one full complete circle. And this is where the starting point is. Now you may not want the starting point over here at the, uh, at the nine o'clock position, you may want it up top. And we'll look at how, how to change that next. But essentially because we put it at 360, we can only go around once. So here's how the start and end positions work. The yellow diamond right here is what sets your initial value. So if I look up here and I see my initial value is at six, that's six right there. If I wanna turn it up, you can see it's now at three. And that's based on this green being the zero. So if you wanted the green up here to be the start, you could click and drag it. And now you see that the green will be up top but then I can move the yellow diamond back over here. It's at zero and everything is starting at the top. If I put this back at the horizontal, you'll see that this is a default way, the default position when you insert the dial. The green indicates where the dial is going to start, the starting value. Well, the starting value is at, initial value is at six, but the start value is zero. So this is zero right here. If you want zero up top, you can click and drag to bring that up to the top. And then maybe you want the dial to then also start. So that's where the yellow diamond works. So you just have a, a, a little bit of a, a couple options for how you control that initial position. And of course, the red flag right here is the ending frame. So if you don't want your dial to go any farther than maybe just a quarter of a circle, then you can control that here with this uh, red flag. In this case, it's three quarters of a circle. All right, so let's look at, just take those off. Let's look at working with custom shapes or images as your dial. So you can make anything a dial. A character could be a dial. We'll bring a character on. We'll put her on the slide. We'll bring in a, uh, like a, a shape for an arrow. And there's gonna be some options here for these types of graphics that you don't have for um, the built-in dials. So anything, bring it on the slide. Anything you wanna have uh, create as a dial, just bring them on the slide go up to the insert tab, and then under the dial, you'll have this option down here to convert to dial. Now, when we first inserted the dial, we had this here, but because nothing was selected, it's grayed out, right? So it doesn't know what you want to convert to the dial. So you actually have to select something first. I'm going to duplicate this arrow for a second. So in this case, let's convert this arrow to a dial. So we just convert it to a dial, and now it's a dial. Same thing with the character. If I want to make her a dial, we just come in and insert. Everyone is a dial. Let's make everything a dial. So now we can spin her around. We can spin hit the arrow around. And we didn't make that one a dial yet. Now there's some options here. I'm just going to remove the character. When I made this a dial, by default, the orientation point is in the center, right? Well, 
we don't have to, we can move that. We don't have to use the default orientation point. I'm gonna make this one a dial real quick. So now we have two dials, but this little crosshair here, when you select it, you'll see the, the little uh, black crosshairs. You don't see this with the built-in dial. You just see it with uh, custom dials. Well, I can come in here and bring that down to the bottom. So you see where the arc is, is actually getting wider. Well, essentially the registration or orientation point now is at the base while this is in the middle. And so here's how uh, the, each of these is going to work. In this case, right, everything's going to rotate around the bottom. So we're at a pointer, and this is more of a spinner, right? More of a spin approach versus a, a pointing approach. So that's what that orientation does for uh, just how your dial is going to work. All right, so we're not just limited to using the built-in shapes either, right? We can actually work with custom images. So if you have a designer, you want to build something in an external program like Illustrator, you can do that, export those as PNG files, and then bring them into Storyline. So in this example, let's just preview this real quick. This one's just like the slider example we did, only we're using dials. So each time we turn the dial, we're triggering a state change with this moon graphic, and you can actually see each of the phases of the moon, right? So there's a subtle animation, which is really nice, but this is essentially the same approach, only using the built-in dials, or the custom dials, rather than a, a custom slider. So here's how this works. I'm just gonna start here on the practice file. What we have up here, if we bring open the, the states, is we have a moon phase graphic. Here's was sort of the template that I used to make sure I could align these correctly. So this one's never gonna show because you see the initial state is set to five. But each of these moons is just placed on a different state. And this is the initial state you see when the file first begins. But then all we're doing is just triggering and showing a different state based on the value of our dial. Now we don't have one in here, so let's go ahead and bring in a custom image that we can use as our dial. So insert picture. And in your images folder, you'll have this custom moonflag.png file. Go ahead and select that or bring in one of your own images. And so once this image is on the slide, I can just position it like any other graphic. And at some point when I'm ready, I wanna convert this into a dial. So we just go up to insert, dial, and then convert to a dial. And now we have our setup. So a couple of things I want to do, if this is going to be my initial state, the moon is at the, uh, the center in the center of the slide and at the top, I want to kind of line these up as well. And another way to do that easily is to do format, align, and then align to the center. And it's going to line it up in the center of the slide. All right, so now I, I need to set this up so that each of these steps corresponds with a state. Now, if I select the moon graphic again, Right, we have nine different moon phases, so that's essentially the equivalent to nine steps, right? So our initial value is zero and goes to 12, so that's the default for converting to a dial. Well, in this case, I only need nine, right? I have nine phases of the moon, and I don't need a zero phase because I always want to show a phase, so I'm going to change that to one. So that moves this over here to one and nine. So each of these steps, so when it's at start value one, it'll show the moon phase one, two, and so on. Well, we need to make a few adjustments here. The first is I want to adjust where my initial position is. And right now you see the yellow diamond is over there. So I can grab the yellow diamond, just move it up. So now it's pointing at the top. And because it's in the middle, right, with this example, the initial value is also set to five, right? So five is right in between one and nine. Now also, with the moon graphic, this also is set to initial five, right? So five is perfectly in the middle. There's four on the left, and then there's four on the right. So five is our center state for the moon graphic, and it's also the center state here for our dial. So that all corresponds correctly. So the first thing we'll do is just add a trigger to change the state of the moon graphic, or the, moon, the moon phases, to a, uh, a state based on the value of our dial. We do that by going to the triggers, and we want to say change the state of, in this case, the, the moon box, right? So that includes all those moons in there, to state 1 when our dial is picture equal to 1, right? So this is just like what we did with the slider interaction. Same process, we're just using a dial, but at this point it doesn't really matter because we're doing this all 
uh, really the same process. We're just adjusting the variable. I'm going to copy that trigger, paste it again, and then we'll just change it for each of the values. So I'm going to go through this and then I will resume the video when I get to the end, but I'll just, all I'm doing is pasting these values. I'm changing this to go to state three when the value of the, of the variable, the dial is three. All right, so I now have nine triggers. Each one is just set to change the state of our moon box graphic to a state number, a custom state number based on the value of our dial. Now, because we're working with variables, it's always a helpful uh, process to add a reference variable here on the slide just so we can see what that current values, the variable's value is. This is obviously a simple example, but we really want to know what our variable's doing here. And also, if I bring this up, picture one is not really that helpful, so let's change this to moon practice, right? Now I'm going to go back to the project variables and let's update that picture one variable name so we know what we're looking at. Just always such a good I practice to uh, keep these all named properly. So I'm going to click OK. And now it's going to be a little bit easier to track those. But let's go ahead and insert that reference variable. So we do insert, text box, and just get that, ah, went too fast. Just get that active text field on the slide and then go back up to insert, reference, and then this time moon practice. And because we're on a dark background, we should make this a little bit lighter and definitely a lot bigger. So this is just going to show us the a current value. Let's go ahead and just preview the file just to verify everything is working. So preview. And now you see the initial set value is at 5, and we've already confirmed that the uh, dial's initial value is 5, and the initial state for uh, the moon box is at 5. So I move it to 4. I can see that that is updating correctly. And I just want to see on every turn, every step, that one of these moons uh, changes to a different state. And then I can always verify that against the uh, reference variable. So for example, sometimes maybe you put these in the wrong order, right? So if I'm at, let's say I'm all the way over here at 9, and this might say 1, that might still work, but it gets a little confusing. So that's why I really like working with these reference variables. If for no other reason, it just lets me validate that what I did uh, was working. Now, the only thing I, I don't like about the way this is working is, in the top part right here, these rotations are okay, but if I come all the way down, right, this is now um, basically not even pointing to the moon, right? So it's at that 180 degree half circle, but we don't have a full half circle of the way we're displaying the moon graphics. Same thing over here. So what we should do is uh, really just shorten uh, the rotation for this graphic. So what we want to do is just adjust for the dial, we want to adjust where our rotation starts and ends, not from a uh, step value, right? Those are already set, but we just don't need the rotation to be uh, 180 degrees. So if I select my graphic, I can look down here and I see, well, the moon is right there. Maybe I'll temporarily make the starting state to one. And now I can just adjust my start flag, right? I can grab this and bring it up and point it a little bit closer to this one. And let's change the moon graphic start to uh, nine now. So I want to see what that last value is. So now I can bring this one up and maybe point a little bit closer to the moon. Now I still need to adjust where my start frame is going to start. And maybe I need to bring it over just a little bit more. And you can tweak these as much as you need to, but essentially I want to get this so that everything is going to be uh, straight up uh, centered in the, in the slide, but then I also have a reduced range. And if I look up here in design, my rotation is now 135. That might be too much, but let's take a look. I'm going to reset this to, set it to 5, and let's preview the slide now. So all we're doing is just reducing uh, the number of degrees in which we can turn our dial, right? And so now it's pointing a little bit better and more accurately toward the moon. So just another way to customize the dial, right? right? Just by reducing uh, the degrees of which you can rotate. So again, just a, a, a big picture overview of some ways you can customize your dials, right? You can, you can change that rotation point, just like we did with the, uh, with the arrow graphics so that the uh, dial will spin differently based on where that orientation point is. Just grab the, uh, the black crosshairs and change that. We also looked at ways just to bring in anything, a character, a shape, an image, and then convert that to a dial and then work with 
uh, the different rotation, whether you want it to make uh, go 360 degrees, a full circle, or you want to reduce it like we did here with the, uh, with the moon graphic. Try the practice activities, bring in some images, see how they rotate. And of course, if you have any questions, there's going to be a lot of neat things coming out with the dials or user examples. So please post a question in the forums and we'll be more than happy to help you out and uh, help you be as successful as possible using Storyline 360's new dial interactions.